Okay, so why do I have a Snapmaker when I already have two 3D printers and a robot arm? Well, a few weeks ago, a mutual friend put me in touch with Snapmaker because they're releasing the Snapmaker 2 at some point soon. So I just wanted to speak to them and find out a bit more about it because I have a few ideas in mind that I think it'd be perfect for. And they said, hey, would you like to check out the original Snapmaker and see what you think? This is also a laser engraver and a CNC machine as well. So I thought, yeah, this, this, this could be fun. So I'm about to start the live stream to build this up now. So stick around. Okay, slight change of plan. OBS keeps crashing my computer and when it doesn't and it actually streams to YouTube, I'm getting like 90% drop frame. So I am, I'm gonna build this up now. You can tag along and see how the experience goes. As this is still trying to load and boot up and do stuff, I, I, I can't even load Audition on that. So we're on the on-camera mic for this one, I think. But we have, a big thick book, well several, three thick books. I think they're the, uh, the user guides. Underneath here, oh look at that. We have the three rails, the three heads, which heads which. So this is, oh it's written on them. Isn't that considerate? So this is the CNC carving head. This is the 3D printing head. And this is the laser engraving head. Oh, and there's a laser warning card. Presumably that means like, don't look at the laser, wear your glasses, that kind of thing. So I have some really good laser goggles, but we're not gonna mess with the laser today. We're not gonna mess with the CNC today. We're just gonna build this thing up, see if we can get it printing. We've got another little box in here that says accessories and tools. And this looks really cool. This is the little sort of power distribution system. This is what everything plugs into. It's like this teeny tiny little control box. The brain of your Snapmaker. Designed for 3D printer, laser engraver, and CNC machine. This would be the spool holder for 3D printing. In the second tray, we have the build plate, a box of cables, a box with a power adapter in it, the little LCD that's, uh, that controls the whole thing, which that's really, really cool. My other 3D printers haven't got anything like this. It's safety glasses and a roll of filament. And what is this? Oh, this would be the little stand for the screen. So, and I think, yeah, there's nothing underneath that. So I'm gonna get all of these out. Then I'll have a look through the book and see how we're supposed to put this thing together. And I think this is just died on boot up because Chrome's just sitting there not responding. So I'm gonna give it another go. <sighs> Computers. Inside the box, there are two pairs of safety glasses. There's one for the laser and one for the CNC. I mean, it's, it's a fairly small build area as a 3D printer, like really, really small. Uh, it's like 125 millimeters cubed. But what is really cool is that they actually give you a spare build plate. So if you tear up your old one or knacker it, you can just take it off and you've got a spare one right here, which is really, really cool. Cause like, like my other printers, they didn't even really have a build plate. It was just, well, they, I mean, they have a build plate obviously, but it's not like a special surface like this. It's just borosilicate glass. And if I kill that, I need to just go on eBay or wherever and buy another piece of borosilicate glass. But with this, like the, I mean, if you kill both of them, then yeah, you're gonna need to buy more. But the fact that they include one extra, as well as the one that's already on the build plate, that's, that's pretty awesome. We have the base, which I didn't originally pull out of the box because I only realized after I closed everything, Shouldn't there be a base with this? So I opened it back up and pulled out the base. We've got the the brain of the snap maker. We've got the X, Y, and Z rails. There's not really a lot to it. It's it's like I don't know, less than a dozen parts. I mean, it, bearing in mind we are forgetting the laser and the CNC right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
ish parts not including the cables and bits so so yeah now we'll actually read the instructions and, uh, and see how this thing goes together all right so it says here that step one is attaching the feet to the base so we're gonna do that first which sucks because I've just put everything on the base but yeah attach the feet to the base and then we put the heated bed and it is heated we put the heated bed onto any one of the linear modules because all three of them are identical so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and put the feet on the base and then the heated bed on the uh, on one of the linear modules The footprint on this base is really small. Where is my... I'm gonna find my tape measure and we'll measure it and, and see just how small it is. So basically it's like American letter size. It's eight and a half by 11, which is a little under A4 for those of you in the UK and most of everywhere else. Yeah, that's really, really small. So this is not gonna take up a lot of space on your desktop at all. You can just quite happily sit it at the end of a desk, which is what I'm gonna do with this when I've built it up. The, the actual physical assembly of all this, like bolting everything together, literally takes 10 minutes. It's literally just bolt the feet on, bolt the bed onto the Y rail, bolt the Y rail to the base, attach the LCD holder, then bolt the Z axis on, then bolt the Y axis on, and then bolt the 3D printing head on, then the control box, and then the spool holder, and you're done. And that now it's just a case of plugging all the wires in where they're supposed to go. Plugging the cables into this thing took about another, I don't know, three minutes, maybe? So, I mean, like, your total setup time for this is less than 15 minutes. You know, for building it and plugging everything in. We still have to level the bed and calibrate it and, and all the rest of it, but, but like, build time? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is literally 15 minutes. Just follow the instructions, they're dead simple. You've got a handful of things to bolt together and it's done, which is amazing because if anyone caught the live stream when I built up the CTCI3, I was building that up for like two hours and it still wasn't printing at the end of it. And here we are after, you know, 15 minutes, maybe, if that. So, oh, right, I need to go grab a laptop, plug it up to this, and then we can start leveling the bed. Yeah, I, I know, I'm a little out of focus. I've moved the camera so that you can actually see the snap maker while I'm setting it up and it's doing its thing and printing and whatever. The one thing I didn't anticipate with this printer is that it's actually quite loud. Yeah, that, that fan's got a not insignificant hum, so you'll only want to turn it on when you're actually going to use it. They do actually make an enclosure for this and I have got one. I'm not building it up in this video. That'll be coming in the future when we do the laser because lasers so that might deaden some of the sound once it's inside that enclosure um, but I mean for now I mean you can probably hear the fan the microphone is a bit closer to the fan than it is to me so you know but it is off to the side so I don't know how well the microphone's picking me up over the printer the printer did come with half a kilo of white PLA filament but I've already got this roll of red that I opened for something recently um, so I'm, I'm gonna give this a go instead because uh, I'm saving the white also for another project which will be coming up in a future video which is yeah it's a 3d printer but it's photography related so <laughs> we are getting back on topic soon don't worry uh, but yeah so I'm gonna put this spool of filament on it feed it into the head and um, see if we can print something out of this thing
it's just a couple of seconds since you saw me pull this off the build plate, but I've actually been printing with this for a few days now, as you can probably tell. So I wanted to go through what I've been printing and what I think overall about the Snapmaker as a 3D printer. For those of you with some 3D printing experience, you will recognize that this is Benchy. For those of you who don't know what that is, this is essentially a benchmark print that allows you to test various techniques with your 3D printer to see how well it performs. Overall, the Snapmaker did a pretty good job with it. There are a couple of issues which I anticipated because there's no part cooling fan that sits around the nozzle. There are a couple of issues with overhangs and bridging. Overhangs is where the printer is trying to lay down filament just a little too far outside the lines and there's nothing underneath for it to cling onto. So gravity kicks in and the filament just drops down. But it's handled a lot better than I expected it to considering it doesn't have that part cooling fan. Bridging is when it tries to, again, lay filament on midair, but there's a start point and an end point and it's trying to bridge that gap in between them, hence the name. But again, it's not completely terrible. I mean, this is not a perfect benchy, but it's far from being the worst benchy that I've ever seen. Looking at some of the other things I made, this is the only actual add-on for the printer that I've printed. This is a, a little clamp that helps you hold a part onto the build plate when you're doing laser engraving or using the CNC milling head. We'll get back to this in another video, but the quality of it is absolutely superb. I mean, there's, there's, there's no warping, there's no obvious gaps between the layers no gaps on the top or bottom surfaces and this is all just using the standard software right out of the box it, it still shocks me how quick this was to assemble and get up and running and printing and that's what you're paying for when you get something like the Snapmaker because this is significantly more expensive than the CTCI3 but what you're paying for is you don't have to waste hours and hours and hours trying to get this thing working you just pull it out of the box build it up load the software and go it's absolutely fantastic even though it is quite small there are a lot of small items that photographers use and lose on a regular basis and one of those is body caps for lenses i lose these all the time and the great thing about 3d printing your own is that you can make them any color you like so if you're regularly shooting out in the woods like i am you can print a color that really stands out against the grass or the dark ground and red definitely stands out Speed light stands is another thing that I, I wouldn't say I lose them so often. Um, I, I just kind of forget where I've put them because I don't use them very often. But when I do use them, I can never find them. So I printed out a few of those. I printed out a new SD card holder for sitting on my desk so that when I get home and I pull cards out of two or three cameras and my Tascam audio recorder and whatever else, I can stick them all, ooh boy, I can stick them all on my desk and I know exactly which cards I need to unload onto the computer. I should probably pick those up before I lose those. Next month, I am flying out to Las Vegas for NAB. And with the new battery regulations that have come in over the last couple of years from various airlines and aviation authorities, battery terminals need to be covered. And even though the, the Nikon batteries these days, the, the, the terminals, you know, you can't stick your finger in them like you could with the old EN EL3s on the D100. But I still wanted to print some caps for them. So I printed up these little black caps that just clip onto the end of the battery but then I realized I've got red filament and green filament I can make my life a whole lot easier when I'm shooting on location just by printing green ones and red ones when I get on location all of these will be wearing green caps because they'll all be fully charged I take it off I put the battery in a camera and when it dies and I need to take it out and replace it I can just go ahead and put on a red cap I know the instant I open my bag which battery I can use and which I should just leave alone because they're dead so there's no point stick it in a camera overall though despite being quite small this is a very fun little printer to use it's very reliable and the operation is so simple it's literally just flick a switch put in your little usb stick pick the file you want to print off the touch screen and it does it that's it it's just a very very good printer and and after having used this now for a couple of days i, I can finally understand why printers like this command the prices that they do because they just save you so much time and effort and hassle. I mean, 
don't get me wrong, I mean, I, I'm a tinkerer. I like playing with stuff and seeing how it works and printing my own upgrades, plus I'm cheap. So I, I love the i3s. I think they're absolutely brilliant. If, if you're into learning that kind of thing, which I am, but if you just want to get it, plug it in and go, this is absolutely the kind of thing that you need. But as well as just being a good printer in its own right, this gets me really excited for what's coming in the future with the Snapmaker 2 because they're taking this whole design philosophy and principle and standard and scaling it up. They're bringing out three new printers, one slightly larger than this, one slightly larger than my i3s, and one is huge, which is supposed to be announced sometime in the next few weeks or months. They haven't been able to give me an exact date yet, so I just don't know. If you've been thinking about buying one, I honestly wouldn't hesitate unless you really need a bigger build plate. If you're, you know, a lot of models you can cut up and print in multiple small pieces and then glue together. But if you really, really need a bigger build plate, I'd probably say hold on and wait for the Snapmaker 2 announcement. But if a build plate this size works for you then and you've been thinking about getting a Snapmaker, then I'd, I'd say just go ahead and do it. It's a fantastic little print. I haven't tried other types of filament in this yet, like ABS and PETG. I probably won't try ABS to be fair because it can put off some pretty noxious fumes while it's printing and I don't have a way to easily vent it in this room. But PETG I do want to try, but first I have another project in mind for this that I want to do with 3D printing before I start playing with the laser head because that's what I really want to play with on this is the laser and the CNC. So. There is one more video coming with this on 3D printing. Then after that, I think we're going to build up the enclosure, put the laser head on there and start burning stuff. If you like this video and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'll have links to all of the models I printed in the description, along with a link to the Snapmaker website where you can find out more about that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.